and the chasers. <laughs> we'll see you next time on The Chase. Goodbye. Live from Sydney, 7 News with Angela Cox. First at four, and the Premier has moved to block tomorrow's Black Lives Matter protest through Sydney, citing health concerns as the state continues to enforce COVID-19 restrictions. Live to Robert Avadia. Rob, this decision is now with the Supreme Court. It is, and that is uh, where I am right now, Angela. Good afternoon. You can see just behind me just a, a few a smatterings of people who say that they will be taking part in the protest tomorrow. They've uh, formed a, a fair number uh, at the Supreme Court. Uh, it is being heard right now inside, and essentially this will come back to a matter of law, whether this march can go ahead. It will be whether the Public Health Act trumps anything uh, about uh, people's right to assemble and to demonstrate. Now, earlier we saw those uh, demonstrations in fairly forceful numbers in Canberra, thousands of people. You can see from the pictures there is no social distancing there whatsoever. Having said that, that protest tomorrow numbered, uh, today numbered in the thousands. It is expected to be anywhere up to 10,000 tomorrow. And the Supreme Court will decide whether that can go ahead. Uh, this afternoon we heard from the mother of David Dungay, a uh, black man who was uh, killed in custody at Long Bay Jail with uh, reportedly the same words as George Floyd, I can't breathe. So a very, very difficult political situation for the Premier right now, respecting the fact that people have been living with these social restrictions restrictions for the past few months now as to whether this protest can go ahead tomorrow. I'm asking and appealing and pleading with those thousands of people who've indicated they're turning up to a protest, please do not do it. Now, the government insists this is not at all a political decision, that the Black Lives Matter movement has nothing to do with this. They say it is purely being taken because of health concerns. Now, there are people saying that regardless of the decision inside the Supreme Court, which is expected uh, later on this afternoon, they will be turning up. Just how many people will turn up remains to be seen. But if they do, police say that they will be there in numbers. They do not want violent confrontations, but they say that they will be ready to make arrests should it be needed. And if they haven't complied with the Supreme Court, then obviously all the police powers that are available to us can be used. But we would much rather see a peaceful outcome. So they do want to see a peaceful outcome. I think everybody does. It's just uh, the question remains whether that will be the case tomorrow. We don't know when a result will be expected from the Supreme Court this afternoon. And I expect it will take some time to go through the nitty-gritty of exactly what the law says. It's unlikely to have a result throughout this bulletin, but we will certainly keep you apprised of the situation throughout the afternoon. OK, thanks so much, Rob. More than a week on from the death of George Floyd, protests in Minneapolis have been replaced by silent reflection and powerful messages of unity. As US Bureau Chief Ashley Mullaney reports, family, friends and civil rights leaders came together to remember. Good afternoon. Well, after days of protest, Minneapolis fell silent today as the city stopped to listen to the words being spoken at the memorial of George Floyd. Hundreds of mourners packed the uh, university auditorium to listen to these speeches from George's family. A mural painted above his casket with the words, I can breathe now. Outside, hundreds more listening in over loudspeaker as Reverend Al Sharpton delivered this powerful message. George Floyd's story has been the story of black folks because ever since 401 years ago, the reason we could never be who we wanted and dreamed to be in is you kept your knee on our neck. What happened to Floyd happens every day in this country in education, in health services, and in every area of American life. It's time for us to stand up in George's name and say, get your knee off our necks. Among those in attendance today was Martin Luther King III. He said America was experiencing a tectonic shift and hoped that the arrest of four officers would bring justice for George Floyd. They have to be tried and, and convicted. Uh, that is not, does not bring George Floyd back, but that is some semblance of justice. But I think the entire um, system uh, 
needs to, some, some restructuring in, in terms of policing around our nation. Three of the police officers now arrested and charged over Mr Floyd's death faced court today. Those charged with aiding and abetting his murder. They've been held in custody. Their bail set at $750,000. Prosecutors arguing they could pose a flight risk. After moments and days of unrest here in the city, this was a sombre day for Minneapolis. George Floyd's brother has led a powerful movement in New York as thousands walked across the famous Brooklyn Bridge. Terence Floyd says he was proud of protests following the deadly Minneapolis arrest, but was angered by violent scenes as riots played out across the United States. Two police officers have been suspended after shoving an elderly man to the ground during a protest in Buffalo, New York. The 75-year-old is in a serious but stable condition in hospital after he was left bleeding from the push. The video shows officers failing to attend to the man as he lies motionless. Buffalo's mayor has called it deeply disturbing. Foreign investors will face a tough new national security test designed to protect critical assets from falling into the wrong hands. Olivia Leeming has more from Canberra. Laws will dramatically increase the level of scrutiny on foreign to protect our assets most at risk of foreign interference. Approvals will be needed for foreign bids for all assets considered sensitive, like technology, telcos, energy and infrastructure projects. And if a national security risk arises after a sale, the Treasurer will have the power to force a foreign company to sell its stake. Security experts say these new rules are long overdue to address the risk mainly posed by China. But the Prime Minister insists no single country is being targeted. These new laws would close the loophole that now only sees private foreign bids scrutinised for assets worth more than $275 million. The question is, though, whether these changes can successfully find that balance between protecting our national security and still encouraging foreign investment, which Australia so desperately needs given the economic downturn fuelled by coronavirus. Labor already flagging it will help pass these new laws, which are due to take effect from next year. In the state's fight against coronavirus have shown New South Wales has no more patients in intensive care. As the long weekend kicks off, some travellers have started making their way out of Sydney, their first big chance to escape. Since the COVID lockdown ease, Chris Ma is following the story. Chris, the Friday exodus out of Sydney is looking a little heavier today. Well, it's on the road again for holidaymakers this long weekend. After an easing of COVID restrictions on their movements, today travellers were making their way to tourist locations around the state trying to shake off the effects of COVID restrictions. It's a much needed boost to regional tourism in New South Wales. Today, health authorities confirmed the ninth day straight of no new locally acquired cases of COVID. There has been some 10,000 tests done in the last 24 hours. Four new cases transmitted from overseas travellers. Once again, the state government says we need to stay on this track before it can be declared the virus is eradicated. This virus can present with mild illness in many, and so we can't exclude that we've got transmission occurring. It comes with other industries preparing to welcome back customers. Gyms are considering a roster system to ensure they stick to prescribed numbers. And businesses are also being urged to consider innovative ways of attracting staff back into the office. That includes free parking, even paying for their taxi rides. A truck driver is in a critical condition after a crash on the M4 which left him trapped for nearly two hours. It comes as police warn they're back out in full force for the long weekend with double demerit points now in effect. Andrew Denny has more. Well, double demerits came into force at midnight with the aim of trying to avoid scenes like this. Here on the M4 off-ramp at Silverwater, a truck has ploughed into the back of another stationary truck with devastating results. 
Our latest modelling shows New South Wales roads are busier than they've been in months and with the lifting of regional travel restrictions coinciding with the Queen's birthday long weekend, authorities are warning all drivers that there will be a heavy police presence on our roads. Now, the easing of health restrictions also means random breath testing has returned and police have already been left shocked by some staggering readings. One woman on the central coast headed to pick up her child ploughed into a parked car and then returned a blood alcohol reading of 0.269, nearly six times the limit. Using your phone behind the wheel this weekend could cost you 10 demerit points and eight points if you're caught speeding 10 kilometres an hour over the limit. Please slow down. Please don't drink and drive. We've seen some unfortunate uh, increases in our high speeding levels over the last couple of months. You'll see more police than you've seen around for a while. Um, get used to it because we're going to be there for a long time. The police blitz lasts until Monday and the warning, as always, is take it easy. To breaking news now in the NRL, Bulldogs legend Terry Lamb has tested negative to COVID-19. Let's go straight to Jim Wilson in the newsroom for us. Jim. Thank you, Ange. Yes, just news in, and that is that Terry Lamb, the Canterbury legend, as you mentioned, Ange, has tested negative to COVID-19. Now, he was basically uh, implicated by the NRL's integrity unit last night, or yesterday at training, for breaking uh, the clean zone, as far as the players are concerned, those strict biosecurity measures in place with the NRL clubs. Now, Terry Lamb went down from his office at Belmore, shook hands with a number of players and made contact, including with Kieran Foran, as he approaches game number 200. So, but the good news is, is that those results came back negative this afternoon. Uh, so that means that the Canterbury Rugby League Football Club can resume training ahead of their crucial clash against the Dragons on Monday. Also some news in this afternoon about James Tedesco. He missed last night's clash against the Brisbane Broncos. There were fears or even concerns about him having uh, coronavirus. He has been cleared of COVID-19. Uh, it was simply a case of a gastro attack for James Tedesco, hence the reason why he missed last night. It is a developing story. Our Chief League reporter Michelle Bishop will have the very latest on Terry Lamb and also Matt Carmichael will report on James Tedesco missing last night for the Roosters in 7 News at 6 o'clock, Ange. OK, thanks so much, Jim. OK. Still to come in Sydney's afternoon news on 7, Ice Bath, the Sydney business at the centre of a big drug discovery. Maddie's murder. New details about the suspect at the centre of this infamous crime. And celebration at sea as locals band together to set a beached whale free. This year, the big freeze at the G goes around the country. That's unbelievable! For the first time, one player from every club will take the plunge. Ice, ice, baby. Who will brave the cold for your team? The Big Freeze Special Event, Monday, only on 7 Mate. Harvey Norman has everything you need for your home, including the very best of Australian-made bedding. Make your statement with gorgeous Australian-made timber and fabric beds and customise the fabric, colour and timber stain to suit your style. Our huge range features the best names in Australian-made mattresses and ensembles. Sealy, Sleepmaker, Beautyrest, King Coil and Body Balance. Complete your sleep experience with beautiful Australian-made Manchester. All this, plus 60 months interest-free. Shop in our spacious stores, support local manufacturers and choose Australian-made. Now at Harvey Norman. Wish you had internet that didn't let you down, that doesn't leave you hanging, and won't have you missing any of the action? Get Vodafone NBN with 4G backup. Plans start from just $55 a month. And with free express delivery, connect instantly once you receive it. Buy online today at vodafone.com.au. Ready? When life gives you messiness, Godfrey's stock take sale gives you cleanliness. Ecovax D-Bot 600 Robot, $299, save $100. Ivax D-Mop, $59, save $40. Godfrey's cleanliness. Even remotely, our home loan specialists can zoom into your home to help you save on your next loan.
Whatever happens, our low prices are here to stay. Aldi. Good. Different. Save on the Samsung Galaxy S20 5G on Australia's best 5G. Find out more in-store or online by June 30. Centrum provides multiple health benefits in just one tablet. Centrum, complete from A to Z. What if I get coronavirus? How do I do my rehab now? Why is it so hard to get out of bed? COVID-19 is impacting us all differently, which is why we've introduced Medibank COVID-19 Health Assist. With direct access to hundreds of healthcare experts, eligible members can receive health advice and support from their homes at no extra cost. Visit medibank.com.au to see how we're providing better support for our members. You're watching 7's 4pm Sydney News and this is the view from Scenic World in Katoomba where right now it is 10 degrees. If you've just joined us, our top story this afternoon, the Supreme Court will make a decision if planned Black Lives Matter protests in Sydney this week can go ahead. The Premier has moved to block the demonstration in the courts following concerns it will breach coronavirus social distancing rules. A fourth person has been charged over the stabbing murder of Riverstone concreter Kevin Cortis. 20-year-old Travis Murdoch didn't apply for bail at Parramatta Court today. Three teens are also charged with killing the 39-year-old and police believe a fifth person was involved. Murdoch will return to court next month. More than a tonne of powders used to make the drug ice have been uncovered at a Rockdale business. The discovery is linked to $300 million worth of ice which was found in a shipment of door handles from Southeast Asia in 2019. A 70-year-old man who was known to police has been charged and was refused bail. We're learning more about the new prime suspect in the Madeleine McCann case. German police believe a convicted rapist serving time in prison murdered the three-year-old. They're now searching for his ex-girlfriend. Sarah Greenolch has more on the case against him. Well, the suspect has been identified as Christian B. He came to the attention of police three years ago after allegedly confessing to being involved in the disappearance of Madeleine McCann. He was in a bar in Germany when a news report appeared on the TV screen about the 10th anniversary of her disappearance. He allegedly told an acquaintance that he had been involved. That man then alerted police. The suspect is now aged 43. He is currently serving a seven-year jail sentence for the rape of a 72-year-old American pensioner in Portugal. He's also been convicted in the past of sexually abusing young children. He had been living in southern Portugal on and off for about 12 years, working in hospitality, trafficking drugs and was well known for breaking into hotels. Police say it is entirely possible that he had targeted the McCann's holiday flat and spontaneously decided to take little Maddie. They say this is the most significant development in this case in the past 13 years. We've been down this road before, many, many sightings, possibilities, suggested suspects in the past, none of which came to anything. Um, both the British and German police seem much clearer this time, and therefore it is significant. But Kate and Jerry have welcomed the, uh, this latest development. Um, they are realistic. They simply want to know what happened to their daughter. At this stage, the evidence authorities have two vehicles and phone records is circumstantial. They are desperate for witnesses to come forward. German police say this is a murder investigation. They believe Madeleine McCann is dead. Here in the UK, she is still listed as a missing person. World leaders, charities and businesses have pledged almost $13 billion to the Global Vaccine Alliance's battle against coronavirus. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which created the alliance, gave $1.8 billion to vaccine research. It also donated $100 million to ensure a COVID-19 vaccine can be accessed by everybody. The meeting was hosted by UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson. 
Las Vegas casinos have reopened almost three months after anti-coronavirus measures closed them down. Social distancing is in place with face masks and hand sanitizer given to staff and entertainers along the strip. The Bellagio's famous fountain shows have also resumed, giving a tribute to frontline workers. Locals in a Brazilian resort town have successfully freed a young humpback whale which was beached for 15 hours. They used a digger to remove sand underneath the nine metre long juvenile whale and a bucket to keep it cool. There was plenty of celebration when the mammal made its way back out to sea. Next in Seven's afternoon news, winter danger, fresh warnings as attempts to stay warm nearly turn deadly. Easing COVID's financial strain, the simple steps to save your credit score. And in sport with Jim Wilson, the Bulldogs' woes continue ahead of Monday's crunch clash against the Dragons. On 7 News with Michael Usher. The legal bid to ban a major Sydney protest, child sex arrests, is there a link to William Tyrrell and how the COVID credit crunch will affect you? Tonight on 7 News at 6. What secret ingredient makes this the perfect soup to warm you up this winter? Find out on New Better Homes tonight. Join AHM Hospital and Extras Direct and you'll get six weeks free. Plus, we'll waive any two and six month waits on extras. Yay! Whether you're a single, a couple, or a family. It's that simple. Uh, that doesn't look very simple. Offer ends June 30. Find out more and join AHM Direct today. AHM, the simple bit. What are you looking at, hon? Oh, just a little bit of T&W. Huh? Hey, I've got a package for Anna. Wow, you're here already. Temple and Webster, save today on our massive end of financial year sale. Rugby league hard man Corey Parker has won it all. He doesn't do gags, he doesn't do pranks, but he does play KFC Supercoach. Register today at supercoach.com.au Don't miss a moment. New by Solvin Duo Syrup is a two-in-one formula traditionally used to soothe an irritated throat and relieve an associated dry cough. By Solvin Duo. Moments uninterrupted. Save a massive 20 to 50% off store-wide at Spotlight. Yes, 20 to 50% off Manchester home decor, fabrics, craft, party curtains and blinds store-wide. So decorate it, celebrate it and create it for less. Sail on now. At Spotlight, it's what you make it. Save on the Samsung Galaxy S20 5G on Australia's best 5G. Find out more in-store or online by June 30. Stratco has all the offers you need during the Stratco stock take sale. Get 72 months interest free on patios and sheds and pay nothing for the first 12 months. Or get a $500 gift card on an Outback patio. T's and C's apply. So, you bring the dream, Stratco will bring the how-to. Om Tanke isn't just a word. It's a lens through which you can view the world and see things differently. It's a new perspective. A considerate, more caring one. Om Tanke shines a brighter light on the things that really matter. And that helps us focus on making those things better. On making the world better. For everyone. Om Tanke. We welcome you to try it. Volvo. What are you looking at, hon? Oh, just a little bit of T&W. Huh? Hey, I've got a package for Anna. Wow, you're here already. Temple and Webster. Save today on our massive end of financial year sale. So, you can't travel the world right now. So what? The time has come for us all to reboot 2020, one unforgettable experience at a time. Now's the time to love New South Wales. Firefighters have renewed a warning barbecue coals mustn't be burned inside after two men were overcome by carbon monoxide. The pair was found suffering from gas poisoning in McMahon's Point this morning after using the coals indoors. They were taken to Royal North Shore Hospital in a stable condition. 
Australians struggling to meet a debt deadline can now call their financial provider before they miss a payment without affecting their credit score. The change has been made as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. The banks have said that they will not um, report you as having missed any repayments. That's really important for your credit score. And we'll have more on what you need to know to protect yourself in these economically uncertain times tonight on 7 News at 6. Time Sport now with Jim Wilson and there's big relief for the Bulldogs this afternoon. There is, Ange. Good afternoon to you. Afternoon, everyone. The Bulldogs have avoided a disastrous outcome with Terry Lamb passing a COVID-19 test this afternoon. Now, Canterbury was ordered not to train today after the club legend was caught breaching strict biosecurity and social distancing rules. He shook hands with several players, including star playmaker Kieran Foran. Lamb was forced to undergo an urgent COVID-19 test with fears he'd shut down the whole club. Very easy to slip up like that. You can see the excitement on the boys' faces as they saw Barr and shook hands with him in second eight. It obviously does slip to their mind. I felt, uh, I feel sorry for the dogs. Now, the game can go on against the winless Dragons on Monday and, just repeating, the Bulldogs are free to train. The Broncos have crashed to their worst loss in the club's history, thumped 59 points to nil by the Sydney Roosters last night. An injury-ravaged Brisbane side was outclassed as the Morris Twins combined to open the Roosters' 10-try thrashing. Luke Keary was brilliant and he slotted a field goal on the siren to open up a 29-0 lead at the break before the two-time reigning premiers piled on five tries in the second half. We fell apart when the furnace was put on us and, you know, I take responsibility for that. I put out a young side, but... You know, with almost $4 million worth of salary cap out, it was the best side that I thought we could come up with. A lot of pressure on that man right there. Now, Roosters lock Victor Radley suffered an elbow injury late in the second half after falling awkwardly in a tackle on Brisbane's Anthony Milford. And James Tedesco missed the game with a fever but has passed a COVID-19 test. We'll see a softer side of Giants superstar Toby Green on Monday before GWS resume their AFL season against North Melbourne next Sunday. Green will take part in the Big Freeze 6 to combat motor neurone disease. It's live on 7, mate, from 2pm on Monday afternoon. It's just great and we've seen what everyone's done around the whole AFL and in the wider community. Um, it's been, yeah, it's been a really good foundation and it just keeps building and for such a great cause. Yeah, it is a great cause. Well done, Toby, and well done for the Giants for getting on board. Green says the Giants can pick straight up from their big round one win over Geelong. And at 26, he believes he's ready to go to another level in 2020 and challenge the AFL's biggest stars. Respected broadcaster Dennis Cometti has become the latest inductee into the AFL's Hall of Fame. Dennis began as a radio commentator in Perth with the ABC in 1972 before joining the Seven Network a decade later. He had a sense of humour and a sense of timing that I think is unique. It came up behind him like a librarian. He never heard it. How do you work that out in the heat of the moment? Centimetre perfect is what was one of his great catch cries. It wasn't a Bruce committee, wasn't just confined to AFL broadcasting, called cricket and the Olympics in a distinguished career. The NBA is going to Disney World. Team owners voted 29 to 1 to finish the season in an Orlando bubble from Saturday, August 1. Only the Portland Trailblazers voted not to resume. Eight clubs out of playoffs contention will be left out, leaving a shortened 22-team competition and full playoffs format. It leaves Ben Simmons, Joe Ingles, Paddy Mills and Aaron Baines as the only Aussies left playing this season. Big weekend ahead. AFL not far away that you'll see right here on 7. And just a reminder, uh, racing on 7 tomorrow. It's a big day in uh, three cities in particular, in Melbourne, Sydney and also in Brisbane with the Stradbroke Handicap at Eagle Farm. So bring on the racing on 7 tomorrow afternoon. Good stuff. OK. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Ange. This afternoon's top stories are next with the latest from the Supreme Court as the Premier tries to ban tomorrow's Black Lives Matter protest. Confronting scenes, a driver charged after an elderly woman is hit by a car in Bankstown. And how Sydney's gyms plan to keep you safe as they prepare to reopen. Still to come. This is Big Brother. Hello, Sam. Hello, Koshi. I've been watching you. Monday, you'll be in my house. Should we be worried? Are you ready to play by my rules? It is his house. I've invited some special guests. And you'll all be sleeping over. <gasps> Won't that be fun? <laughs> <laughs> You'd better not snork, Hoshi. We'll find out, won't we? Sunrise Big Brother Week kicks off Monday.
We spend one third of our lives at work, another third in dreamland, and that sacred last third here. From home time to sleepy time, IKEA designs around life's precious moments. So wake up happy every morning, even Mondays. Make mess, mohawks, and laugh until your belly hurts. Because with IKEA, there really is no place like home. Are you ready to get back to life as you love it? Get full digital news access plus weekend home paper delivery for just $5 a month for the first three months. Call 1-800-323-999 today. The rear-wheel drive Kia Stinger. It took seven years to create and 4.9 seconds to understand why. Terry White Kmart, we're here to help this winter. It's why pharmacists like Bridget are trained to administer flu vaccinations right here in store. Book your flu vaccination now. Terry White Kmart, now that's real chemistry. Should I be worried? With COVID-19 Health Assist, eligible members can receive health advice from hundreds of Medibank healthcare experts at no extra cost. See how we're providing better support today. Live from Sydney, 7 News with Angela Cox. Good afternoon to our top story. The Premier has moved to block tomorrow's Black Lives Matter protest through Sydney, citing health concerns as the state continues to enforce COVID-19 restrictions. Live now to Robert Avadia at the Supreme Court for us. Rob, are we any closer to a ruling? Certainly closer, Angela, but uh, it's really how long is a piece of string at the moment. We're advised that what's happening right now in Court 9D of the Supreme Court would take anywhere between 30 minutes and 90 minutes. My experience is that court tends to take longer than any prediction, so uh, it's difficult to guess exactly what will happen in there, but we do know they are going over every minutia of the law, and what we're looking at at the moment is a juxtaposition of the Public Health Act versus people's right to demonstrate, Commonwealth law versus state law, and what trumps what. We have, of course, seen extraordinary sacrifices from Australians in the past few months, people who have not been able to go to funerals, not go to weddings, businesses that have gone to the wall, but the protesters here say while they respect uh, all of that, they also say that uh, what happened with George Floyd's death and how black rights have been galvanised around the world, this is an opportunity they say they simply cannot pass up. So we're being told by some protesters that regardless of what happens in 9D this afternoon, they will be attending tomorrow. The question is how many people will be attending, how many police resources will be dedicated to that and whether there is any pushback from police and subsequent violence. Certainly both protesters and police are hoping it does not come to that. Angela? OK, thanks so much, Rob. Federal police have smashed a major child abuse ring operating in three states across Australia. For more, we're live to Serena and Aloro. Serena, what played out in this operation? Good afternoon to you, Anne. Well, I can tell you two New South Wales men have been charged in what police allege is an horrific child sex ring operating in the town where William Tyrrell disappeared. Other men have been charged in Queensland and Western Australia. The Australian Federal Police pouncing on the tiny town of Kendall on the New South Wales mid-north coast on Thursday morning. It's part of a long-running investigation which we're told is not related to the disappearance of William Tyrrell. Police, though, have evidence of eight children as young as four are being abused and exploited. Their images traded on the dark web. Now, I can tell you both New South Wales men face court in Kempsey today. They will remain behind bars and will appear again in September. But police do say there will be more arrests, Ange. OK, thanks, Serena.
After days of violence on the president's front door, finally calm for the time being in Washington, D.C. Amelia Brace is in the U.S. Capitol. Amelia, weather brought an end to today's protest, but the White House is on notice heading into the weekend. Yeah, well, it was a big storm that rolled through and it really cleared the streets. We once again uh, saw thousands of protesters here in Washington, D.C. DC today, but on a whole, they were mainly peaceful, so much so uh, that the curfew for tonight was abandoned. Uh, all eyes are actually on the weekend, with potentially one million protesters set to take to the streets. Uh, the White House has been preparing for a number of days, and overnight, we saw it almost fortified with new fencing put up and some concrete bollards. Uh, the police chief of the city uh, spoke out this morning saying that this could potentially be one of the biggest events uh, that the capital has seen. Once again, calling for everyone to be peaceful and calm. Uh, we spoke to a few people today, though, who said that there's nothing that will stop them protesting again this Saturday. It's just there's other people. It's not just George Floyd. There's many other people that we've almost forgotten about, but they need justice as well. I think we need to start seeing change. I think we need to stop seeing this proportionate amount of black lives being sacrificed compared to whites. And Donald Trump's schedule has just come out. He is flying out of Washington, D.C. tomorrow to the state of Maine. And at this stage, it does not look like he'll be here for the weekend. An elderly grandmother has been hit by a car in confronting scenes while trying to cross the street in Western Sydney. Tom Saker has the details. And while the 78-year-old woman suffered severe injuries, she's incredibly lucky to be alive today after she tried to cross Oxford Avenue here in Bankstown just after 6 o'clock last night. Security vision shows the woman look right and left before crossing, but just as she is about to get to the other side, she is hit hard by a Honda CRV, which seems to have braked simultaneously. Residents along the avenue rushed to her aid. She was just laying on the floor. She was very small and you could tell she was an older lady. The 31-year-old driver jumped out of his car and appeared to ring triple zero. He has since been charged with dangerous driving and negligent driving, occasioning grievous bodily harm. The woman is being treated at Liverpool Hospital. Well, our, our crash investigators have done a thorough investigation at the site and as a result, there's enough evidence there to prefer what are very serious charges on our roads. The woman's car had been parked across a nearby driveway, possibly after it had broken down. The woman's family told 7 News that was the only explanation as to why she was out walking in the area. And without a mobile phone, she may have been looking for help to fix her car. The 31-year-old driver has been granted bail and will face court in August. Ange? Gyms across New South Wales are preparing to reopen under strict new guidelines, but there are still concerns about the risk of coronavirus outbreaks. Peter Fagan has more. Yeah, well, Ange, they were one of the first businesses forced to close its doors due to COVID-19. It will now be one of the businesses that is last to reopen. But gyms have always been a focal point or one of those key issues raised with government at uh, press conferences. And of course, as we know, just this week, Premier Gladys Berejiklian set the date. So as of the 13th of June, gyms will be able to reopen. But it will be far from business as usual. Jordan McCreary is the director of a number of F45s. Now his studios will be confined to just 10 people and that includes staff. It's an incredible amount of work and money just to meet the new government requirements. But to make life easier and safer, of course, for his clients, Jordan has signed up to an online compliance company called SoulSafe. Now, Ange, SoulSafe is a company that will ensure your business is COVID compliant and will also train your business on how to deal with an outbreak should there be one. It's all online training and it's easy to use. All businesses need to do is to go to the company's website and register. We've planned for there to be a case in one of our studios and we do have a good action plan in place for that to happen. Now, as it was just today that the government reiterated its positions on gyms, reminding owners and punters to ensure they adhere to the rules and the social distancing policies. We have to be making sure that it's disinfected and clean between usages. There's a whole lot of factors that they're working through. Now, Ange, just like the city's pubs and cafes, police have made it quite clear that they will be doing spot inspections at gyms after they open on the 13th of June.
Australia is a step closer to finding a COVID-19 vaccine with the announcement of a major deal between researchers and Australian pharmaceutical manufacturers. Clinical trials will now be fast-tracked. Elliot Chipper has more. It's been a global response to a global pandemic. This announcement today could see Australian researchers and manufacturers at the forefront in the race to develop and deliver a COVID-19 vaccine. Something researchers at the University of Queensland have been working tirelessly on. It's non-stop, basically. Every day is something new, throwing up surprises. Accelerated thanks to the partnership between Australia's largest health company, CSL, and Norway-based Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations. It's CSL choosing our vaccine to uh, invest in and progress uh, is, is a real uh, confidence boost for the, for the vaccine. This deal ensures the quickest timeline possible for its development, manufacture and distribution if successful. We hope uh, to have data to present to regulatory agencies around the middle of next year, 2021. From there, large-scale manufacturing can start at CSL's Melbourne facilities. Now, there are still many tests and hurdles to go before this potential vaccine could reach manufacturing stage. But if it does, the world could see up to 100 million doses coming out of Australia by the end of 2021. Prince Charles says he's missing hugs from his children and grandchildren during the coronavirus pandemic. The future king was sympathetic to other patients, speaking publicly for the first time since catching the virus. I was lucky. I've had it. And um, uh, I can so understand what other people have gone through. The prince says he also won't be able to attend his father, Prince Philip's 99th birthday next week. Tyson the alpaca could hold the key to a major coronavirus discovery. Researchers in Germany trying to find a COVID treatment have infected Tyson with the virus. The 12-year-old alpaca will be used to isolate tiny antibodies that bind to the virus and could be used to block the infection in humans. Tyson is said to be doing OK. We're live to Comsec for the latest on your money next. Plus. A supermarket giant's big move to help protect the environment. Sydney researchers at the forefront of a major cancer discovery. And it's 16 degrees in Parramatta. We'll have Sydney's weekend forecast very soon. In the closest ever grand final. Oh, wow. It is extraordinary. Stunning. Very, very seductive. It all comes down to this. It's a nine. It's a nine. So it's down to me. Don't miss the nail-biting finish. You are house rules champions. Who will win? The spectacular house rules grand final, Sunday at 7. Join AHM Hospital and Extras Direct and you'll get six weeks free. Plus, we'll waive any two and six month waits on extras. Yay! Whether you're a single, a couple, or family. It's that simple. Uh, that doesn't look very simple. Offer ends June 30. Find out more and join AHM Direct today. AHM, the simple bit. Drive now, pay later on selected Volkswagen Amarox and vans. Hit the ground rolling with your first three monthly repayments on us. Plus, get a 1.99% interest rate. Volkswagen. Introducing BP Rewards. Now you can earn points for every BP purchase. BP Rewards. Use BP points to spend in store. BP Rewards. Or get dollars off fuel. BP Rewards. BP Rewards. Or you can choose to earn Qantas points. Now that's what I call BP Rewards. Totally BP Rewards. Start earning today. BP Rewards. Your rewards, your way. The world's most exotic fragrances are made by nature. That's why we've created Botanica fragrances infused with natural ingredients that are responsibly sourced. Botanica by Airwick. You've got a lot of living to do in retirement. Are you confident you can pay for it? Using part of your super or savings, add a challenger lifetime annuity to your retirement income 
and you'll enjoy guaranteed income for life, helping to cover your living costs. So like thousands of other retirees, you too can look forward with confidence. Find out more at challenger.com.au. Your Ford dealer is still open and ready to help your business get back to business with high vis value. So you can get a hardworking Ranger XLT for only $54,990 drive away. Or the great value Ranger XLS for just $46,490 drive away. And don't forget to check if your business is eligible for the government's instant asset write-off this financial year. So hurry into your Ford dealer now for high vis value. in the award-winning smash hit. What do you want from me? To know my enemy. For the first time on 7, The Last Samurai, tonight. Bar owners concerned about spreading coronavirus have sent in the robots in a bid to limit person-to-person -person contact in bars. This robot in South Korea will mix your order, make ice cubes and bring out the drinks at this bar. This robotic trio in the Netherlands serves the drinks without any social contact and, as you can see, without much emotion either. To breaking news now, Rugby League has been given the green light to allow fans into games. Live to Chief Rugby League reporter Michelle Bishop. Michelle, what are the changes? Good afternoon, Andrew. We haven't seen a crowd at a rugby league game since round one. Way back in March, we've had to stick with those cardboard cutouts. But the New South Wales government this afternoon has given permission for uh, a crowd to return to the NRL as of next weekend, which is just super exciting. Uh, of course, it will be similar to those conditions as uh, pubs and clubs in New South Wales with around 50 people in those catered areas. Um, really exciting news for fans. And, of course, we won't have that fake TV noise, a real authentic rugby league crowd and of course as the weeks move ahead and, and this sort of uh, looks to see if it will go all right of course numbers will increase but you will see rugby league fans back at the footy as of next weekend well and that is a relief okay thanks michelle checking finance now with stephen daglian at comsec stephen a remarkable week for investors how did the market finish on friday Good afternoon, Angela. Exactly right. Look, the market was a little quieter today, only up by about a tenth of a percent heading into the long weekend because the market will be closed on Monday in Australia. But keep in mind, we've had five days of gains in a row. Now, the last time the market rose from Monday to Friday without a fall was October last year. So it doesn't happen very often. We had gains of around 4.2% this week. We're up 15% over the last six weeks as well. So things really have come back strongly. Today really was a tug of war between the banks that did very well and they've actually stood out this week. Uh, they were up about 3% today. And also the healthcare stocks, which did quite poorly. But the banks did just enough to push the market higher. We also had strong gains from online retailer Kogan.com. Uh, because of COVID-19, online shopping has been quite popular. That was a reason why it's actually had profits doubling in recent months and the Aussie dollar finally sits at 69.9 US cents. So near the best levels of the year, Angela. Lots of good news in there. OK, thank you so much, Stephen. Sydney's 6pm news is coming up with Michael Usher. Hi, Michael. Yeah. What are you working on in the newsroom? Hi there, Angie. Here's what we have for you tonight. Uh, the Premier and Police Commissioner have launched a Supreme Court bid to stop Sydney's Black Lives Matter rallies tomorrow over COVID-19 fears. It comes as hundreds marched in Canberra in solidarity with the US uprising. Tonight, protesters vow to defy the law. Federal police uncover a horrific child sex ring in what they're calling the biggest domestic child exploitation network uncovered in recent times. At six, we have a look at this. Is there a link to William Tyrrell? Drivers are being put on notice ahead of the long weekend. Double demerits and extra RBTs. Police vowing to be out in full force. Also, more sickening violence on American streets as mourners gather to farewell George Floyd. And the COVID credit crunch. What it means for your loans, insurance, bills, even your phone. And how to make sure your score isn't affected, Angie. So there's some of the key stories. We'll have more, of course, in Sydney 7 News at 6 o'clock. OK, thanks so much, Michael. Woolworths has ditched plastic packaging for some of its fruit and vegetables in exchange for recyclable cardboard. The trial begins with apples, sweet potatoes and tomatoes with paper also replacing plastic tags on produce. 70% of our customers have told us that taking care of the planet is very important. Woolies says it's reduced plastic by 240 tonnes over the past year. It's 4.50. Let's get a check on Sydney's traffic. 
Good afternoon, Marina Ivanovic here in the Mortgage Choice Traffic Chopper. It's a long weekend and everyone's heading away via Pennant Hills Road. We've got lots of congestion heading northbound through Carlingford, as you can see here on the approach to the M2. And those delays continue up towards the M1 and the M2 struggling as well on the approach. Mortgage Choice will compare hundreds of home loans to find the right one for you at no cost to you. For low rate home loans and cashback offers from selected lenders, visit mortgagechoice.com.au. A key to just how cancer cells become resistant to drugs has been unlocked by Sydney researchers. It's hoped this will lead to more effective treatments, potentially affecting hundreds of thousands of cancer sufferers. Nina Stevens has the details. It's been a medical mystery. Why is it that some cancer cells fight off drugs meant to stop them in their tracks? Researchers at the Garvin Institute in Sydney now believe they know how that happens, that the cancer cells mutate their genes to fight off antibiotics, making them resistant to them. They've worked out that by stopping that process from happening, there can be a big difference. When tried on a model of pancreatic cancer, cell growth was reduced by 60% compared with just using a cancer drug on its own. Unfortunately, uh once a cancer has spread and become incurable, even though we have many very effective therapies, they often stop working after a period of time. So figuring out how to do something about that is very important. Potentially a crucial step in developing more effective treatments with wide-ranging implications for many types of cancers. The next stage of research will be human trials. Combine both the targeted therapies that we need to stop resistance emerging in with these uh, drugs that increase the damage to the DNA of the cells to see if... Although much work does need to be done, researchers hope to start those human trials at the start of next year. Next in Seven's Afternoon News, Samantha Brett will have all your weekend weather details. We're back soon. Hello, Marissa. Are you ready for Monday, 7.30? The Rankin sisters were myself and my twin sisters. We are the first to bring aerobics to Australia. <laughs> Known for our morning TV appearances. You like to get physical, I see. We're like a household name. Welcome to 2020. I am Big Brother, and I have chosen you. Underestimating me is a big mistake. And you think you can just step your way into being the last one standing? Life doesn't stop at 60. I aim to win, and I'm ready for it. I'll be the judge of that. I am Big Brother, and I'll see you Monday, 7.30. Choose a King Coil mattress at Domain. Proudly Australian made and owned. Up to 60% off King Coil intimate mattresses and ensembles. The Thea Queen mattress. Four feels, one hot price. $699. The limited edition King Coil CXX features a three-zone conformer coil system. While Ravello offers King Coil's Reflex Plus support at a great price. Relax and complete comfort when you add an AH Beard adjustable base. Priced from just $999. Shop in store or online now at Domain. <laughs> Ready for a change? Suncorp now has zero monthly account keeping fees on all deposit accounts. That's on both personal accounts and business accounts. That's the Suncorp spirit. It's the final days of Anaconda's massive 20 to 50% off store wide sale. Huge savings on camping gear, bikes, kayaks, fishing gear, clothing, footwear, and more. Some exclusions apply. 20 to 50% off sale. Hurry, final days at Anaconda. Anaconda! She loves cats, so tonight I'll borrow my neighbors. <laughs> my babies. Temptations Cat Treats. some of your data to kids who need it most and power their potential. Darkness and daylight Pleasure like a smile Experience the delicious intensity of Lint Excellence. 
the finest dark chocolate crafted to perfection by the Lindt Master Chocolatier. Excellence from Lindt. Big money. Oh, boy. Means big risks. It's a challenge, and I'm up for the challenges. New The Chase, weekdays on 7. This weather report brought to you by Bridgestone Select for tyres and car servicing. A woman in California has returned to her partner's car to discover a bear sitting in the front seat. Police were called in and shot a window to let it out. Before it was caught, the bear caused major damage to the vehicle. It's believed it was searching for food. Now, here's Samantha Brett with the latest weather, Sam. It was a chilly morning. And good afternoon. It was pretty chilly and also foggy start right across the state, warming up to 20 degrees in the city. That is three degrees above average for this time of the year. Right now it is 16 degrees in the city. That is dropping quite quickly though. We are looking at a chilly eight degrees overnight. Causing those cooler temperatures, a light wind sitting around that high pressure system. A cold front will bring a few showers from Sunday and some very frosty mornings with southerly winds expected at around 20 to 30 kilometres an hour. That system won't affect Brisbane though, which will see a warm top of 23 degrees tomorrow. A chilly start for Canberra, minus 4 degrees, 13 for Melbourne, 10 degrees for Hobart and Perth, sunny and 25. Zooming into Sydney and plenty of sunshine, although some more chilly temperatures overnight. Perth dropping to just 2 degrees, minus 1 at Katoomba. 19 degrees the top tomorrow in the city and mostly sunny. That is two degrees above average. So for the week ahead, well, we are looking at plenty of cold mornings and a few showers. Just two degrees on Sunday morning, warming up to 17 degrees in our west. Tops of 18 on Monday, 19 on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday with some light showers throughout the next week. So keep that brolly handy. I'll have more weather at six o'clock, Ange. OK, thanks so much, Sam. And that's Sydney's 4pm news for this Friday. Michael Usher will bring you 7 News at 6. I'm Angela Cox. Stay with 7 now for The Chase Australia. I hope you have a great night. It's already been a season like no other. I've been kicking the footy with my kids. I've been playing in the backyard. But the time has come. Now we're back. We can't wait to be on the field. To witness them in battle, there's nothing on earth like it. When they cross that white line, they become something.